Today is the day we're going to try and get Myth Gloves. If everything goes correctly and we burn nothing and nothing regenerates HP, this should be easy. But, you know, it's RS, things go wrong, and we'll just have to make do with what we can. Now, the first sub-quest I'm going to do is Evil Dave. Honestly, it's a really nice one to get over and done with. It will get me nice cooking experience, and also, due to the fact that Shadow of the Storm was such an annoying quest, I just feel, like, satisfaction when completing this sub-quest. Not that it's a hard sub-quest, it's probably one of the fastest ones. I actually think this took me about five minutes. I was really lucky with um, my cat getting the the spices and how low they are like only orange had three and everything else was one and two so very very fast to complete this but here we are handing it in to evil dave really nice it just you know kind of just gets shadow of the storm over and done with i now think it's fully done i was able to get the glove upgrade and it's really nice to think that it's over and done with so 7,000 cooking experience that's the experience i think i had spare from last episode and that will get me 75 cooking Really nice. I mean, I didn't need to do it that way, but I'm lazy. Anything that saves me time, I'll just do it. So 75 cooking. That's the final level we're going to do for all the other subquests. So we'll be doing Pirate Pete first, just due to the fact that you have to hit less creatures on this. Like I only need 6 HP experience gain compared to, you know, the Ogre, which is 40 plus. So this is how I do it. I don't want to use Airstrike because I can hit twos and honestly every HP experience matters at this point. I'm going to be so close if everything goes perfectly. So this is my invent. I suicided some Trouts because, you know, they don't hit much. But here we go. We're hitting them all or hitting them all once. I think that was the fourth and this is the fifth. Really nice. Um, you always want to make sure you hit it after your recall has done some damage because if you hit it straight away and then it regenerates before the recoil hits it down, it's not going to count as your kill, and I definitely don't want that to happen. So here we go, killing the crab, same thing, wait for the recoil to hit it down a little bit and then punch it, get the crab meat and get the kelp and off we go. Now, I think if I burn this, I could maybe go get another crab meat because I don't need to kill the five creatures again, but it's still going to be tight. Like, I think I'm going to have like two HP experience spare, and that's cutting it very close. So let's just cook this and not burn it and move on. So, yep, very nice. We're able to cook it. I mean, 75 cooking. I'm not sure if I can burn it. I mean, maybe there's, maybe you can burn it at any level. I'm not sure if this is like a static food or something. But either way, Pirate Pete subquest is done. That means I think we have access to Black Gloves, which actually is really good. Like, it's what, one strength bonus lower than Myth and maybe one Mage bonus lower as well. But anyway, we'll try and get this over and done. We'll see how it goes. So this is uh, Chompy Bird Hunting, the first quest, not even the sub-quest for Recipe for Disaster because I haven't done this quest before. I wanted really high high range because I wanted to hit it straight away. I was hoping to one-hit it, but 9 and a 1, that's 10 HP, it's all good. Um, it didn't regenerate. Very nice. Now, if this burns, I'm not even going to finish the quest. I'll just leave it there. There's no chance of me getting Myth Gloves after that, but luckily we do cook it. So I can continue on, finish this quest, try and do the sub-quest and see how we go. So first step complete. Obviously don't eat the chompy, please. Um, now we just have to hope for the best that the other chompy doesn't burn. And after that, the juggly, there's a trick I talked about before with the Tower of Life. So really, it's just one more chompy. I just have to kill it, cook it, and then everything should be good. But we'll see how it goes. All right, so now we're starting off the Recipe for Disaster subquest with the uh, Ogre Guy. I'm not sure his name. I don't even want to try and pronounce it. I'll just say it wrong, but I'll just call him the Ogre Guy. So here we go, have to go get this over and done with. I really wish you could like put a chompy in the Tower of Life and get more that way, but I guess Wild Pies would probably crash because of that. But anyway, here we go, killing the chompy now. Four, five, and a one, so that's really nice. 10 HP total, it didn't regenerate. And as you saw there, we actually have 30 HP experience remaining, which is actually really good because even if the juggly regenerates one HP, I should still have enough to kill it before I get 12 HP. So all I have to do is successfully cook this Chompy. So as long as this goes well, everything else will work out, hopefully. And we cook it. That's really good. I mean, obviously 70, 75 cooking helps, and I'm just glad I wasn't able to burn anything. So now all i got to do is get the juggly over and done with. So with my theory or my thinking of this, the jugglies have 20 HP, and even if it regenerates to 21, I still won't get enough HP experience to actually level up to 12. If it regenerates twice to 22 HP, then there's a 26% chance I'm going to get it. Because as you see here, this juggly bird has 20 HP. Just using Slayer Music's guide because it's what I use for every guide. And yeah, so it makes sense. Jugglies have 
double the HP of Chompy, so I didn't even think twice about it. However, I was mistaken. This juggly bird has 22 HP experience, and I didn't realize until right now. But I can't stop. I mean, I'm so close. I have 3 HP experience remaining. I think it has less than 3. And I hit a 2 for 1 HP experience remaining. Oh my god, I was so worried. I would have stopped because it said 3 HP experience remaining and 3 HP experience on the juggly bird. But OS Buddy is so eh with the HP experiences. And I knew I already hit a 1. So I was I just risked it, hoped for the best, and I was just, I don't know, completely speechless here. I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh my god. I just like froze. One HP experience off the level. It's it's really nice due to the fact that I guess it looks kind of good, and I'm so glad I didn't get 12 HP experience. But any mistake, like if I accidentally ice split a skeleton, or if I make another mistake on splashing, goodbye 11 HP. I have to be so careful on this account now. But there we go, we've got three raw jubblies. Even if I burn this or accidentally eat it or anything, I should be able to continue going and just get another one. So honestly, it's really good. I just have to be super careful of 11 HP. I'm actually a little bit scared to splash now because if you remember in one of the earlier episodes, I think like episode five or so, I did get HP experience from splashing. So a little bit worried, but either way, we handed in, we have access to Myth Gloves. Let's just get the cash stack out. And there we go. It's really nice. I mean... Even if I get 12 HP now, I'm glad I was able to get Myth Gloves with 11 HP. It was like one of the hardest goals or like theory crafting wise, but I'm really glad I did it. Now I'm just showing all the experience I got. These, all the rewards are mainly from like quests and stuff. It wasn't even that long. I think I only took like an hour or so for all the quests, like 55 HP experience per hour and I gained 63. So yeah, just a little bit over an hour. But I just wanted to, you know, log out and in, show the one HP experience remaining. I was still like just completely... Oh, I don't know. It just felt surreal that I was that close. But anyway, I actually thought I'd have three HP experience remaining, or at the very worst, two. But yeah, doesn't matter. It's over and done with now, and now we can actually go do other things. So I'm just going to be doing a little of like miscellaneous stuff on the account now. I've had a lot of half keys on the account, which I've never handed in. I mean, obviously you get the dragon stone, and there's nothing else I really need. I would like to get some coal or iron ore, just due to the fact that that will save me from having to mine it or buy them from the shops. But, ah, you know, it doesn't really matter, I just want to hand them in anyway. Got 100 coal there, not too bad. I do want to make some more cannonballs before going to gangs. I obviously need 50 attack and then higher strength. But honestly, after that, there is not much more to do on this account before it's at least PK ready. Uh, limp, root seed for, uh, sorry, limp root seed for... Um, from the nature impling really nice i do need them from super strength pots so that's really good but i some reason have 2.4k flax in the bank and i don't really need money on the account at the moment i don't really need anything but i might as well do them due to the fact that i can then alk my bows and just make a little bit of profit because then i can buy more runes the only thing i need to buy in the future are chaos sorry not chaos are death and blood runes for ice splits but everything else i've pretty much already got so I might as well just make all these um, flax into bowstrings. I can then alk them from the magic experience, get me closer to 82, and then get closer to um, PKing. So, yeah, that's what I decided to do. Honestly, after all this, I'm glad I didn't have to get 80 fletching as well, because, man, that would have taken a long time. Um, <laughs> I don't really like wood chopping, and I do definitely don't like picking up flax, so it's really nice. Now, this is actually an important level for 10 HP accounts or 11 HP accounts because rune crossbows are really good, generally the best weapon you're actually going to get. I do have crystal bow, so you know it's not really important to me, and it's actually really hard to get it on this account, because I have to kill metal dragons. Now that I have the anti-fire shield, I guess I could, but really, there's no need. I'm not going to be doing any more slayer for a bit, and if I do, I can use my crystal bow. Uh, 70 fletching, it's a nice level to get. I can make you long bows now. I actually have a few U's in the bank, but I don't need the GP, and I can't really be bothered fletching. I'm just happy to alk all these and move on. So 2.4k alks, it's really nice. Theoretically, I guess I could alk the unstrung ones, but it feels like I'm wasting fletching experience. Like, maybe one day I want to get my fletching up in case I want to go, like, PKing with magic short bows or something. So just in case that happens, I'm not going to bother doing that. Now, here we are buying some nature runes. I don't actually have enough cash to buy all the nature runes, but obviously I can alk while doing this. So just alk some, and then I can buy enough. So 3k nats, really nice. I'm now just going to go to my classic Castle Wars spot and out there. You know, sometimes you get implings and, you know, it's something to do. A little bit less boring than just standing somewhere else. And I can't be bothered doing agility while alking, so I'll just be lazy and out here. So here we go with the first mage level, or 
I think it's the first one, 79 mage, got entangle now. Good, but won't really ever use it. I mean, I guess I could use it if I'm going to PK on normal spell books, but obviously I need to get 82 anyway for ice splits. So as we, get, we keep going, um, got a couple of implings there and a book of knowledge, which is pretty nice, but not very needed. 1.1 mil, almost 1.2. Good due to the fact that I had like zero GP after buying all the nature runes and we still have 500 and so spare. I will need those for the gangs because they do drop lots of alkables and getting your inventory space is kind of hard when doing them because there's actually so many drops. Obviously the main drops you want are the intelligence for experience, but ah, uh, I'll just good to have some nature rune spare so I can out some stuff as well. So 79 mage getting really close to 82. I'm still a little bit scared to alk, I mean, um, splash due to the fact that I'm one HP experience away, but I will have to do something to get my mage up. And 75 smithing. Now that's honestly enough cannonballs for probably all the gangs. I don't actually need that many strength levels. I think my goal was 75 strength and obviously 50 attack, but 50 attack will definitely be very quick and 75 strength shouldn't take that long. So I'm going to end off the episode here. Thanks for watching, and next episode we're probably going to go on the Gangs Grind, or what's it called? Criminal... I forgot what it's called. Either way, we'll be getting our combat stats up and hopefully getting PK ready soon. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.